Want to protect your online privacy for free? Well, in this video, I show you step by step how to set up your own VPN at home using OpenVPN. Hi, my name's AJ, and I've been working in cybersecurity for the last eight years. And on this channel, we teach all things cybersecurity for beginners. So let's get into it. So before we get into it, I just want to explain what a VPN actually is. So VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And in simple terms, a VPN is like a private tunnel between you and the internet. When you connect to the internet through a VPN, all the data that you send and receive travels through this secure tunnel. And this helps keep that data hidden from others who are on the network itself, such as your internet service provider. So as you can see here, somebody without a VPN uh, connecting directly to the internet, all of their traffic will be viewable by the internet service provider or anybody that is listening on that network. So things such as browsing websites, shopping and sending messages can be exposed. With a VPN, like you see on the left, the user connects to the VPN first, then the VPN acts as a protective shield. And instead of the data going directly to the internet, like the first user, um, it passes through the VPN, uh, which encrypts it and hides that traffic, making it very difficult for anyone to see what they're actually doing online. So there is other reasons that somebody might want a VPN, and it might be to access your home network remotely. So a VPN can also allow you to work from your home network from anywhere in the world. Um, for example, if you're traveling abroad and you want to access maybe files stored on a device at home or maybe a local resources, maybe you want to view um, security cameras in your home network, for example, a VPN allows you to securely connect to your home network just as if you were sitting there right at home. So now that you know what a VPN is, the requirements for this project are two Linux virtual machines, open VPN software. One virtual machine is going to act as the VPN server. Uh, and the second is going to be acting as the client so that we can test it. And of course, we're going to have the open VPN software, which I'm going to show you how to install. So let's get into it. So now in this step by step guide, the first thing that we start with are the two Linux virtual machines. Now I'm using VMware and I'm going to be using two Kali Linux virtual machines. If you want to be able to set this up, I've got a video on my channel that shows you how to set up a Kali Linux virtual machine. So make sure you go and watch that one first if you are unsure about setting this up. So we're going to start with our first virtual machine, which is going to be our open VPN server. So make sure you start that one up. Once you've got that one booted up, you want to go into your terminal. And first of all, we want to make sure that this virtual machine is up to date. So you can do sudo app get uh, dash get update and then hit, hit enter, enter your password. And then you should see this and your virtual machine will be up to date. Now we want to install the open VPN software. So we do sudo app install. OpenVPN and EasyRSA. This is going to install OpenVPN and EasyRSA. So hit enter, put yes, and then just wait for it to install. Once you see this, it will be installed and you'll be ready then to create a new directory for EasyRSA. Then you want to run these three commands where we're going to be, this first command is creating a new directory called OpenVPN-CA in your home directory path. Then the second command is going to copy all of the contents within the EZRSA folder and move it to our newly created openvpn-ca folder. And then we're gonna switch into the openvpn-ca directory. And once you hit enter, it should then look like this. And we just wanna see what's inside this folder. So we can do ls. And as we can see, we've got all of the files that we need. So now we're gonna open an easy RSA shell and we're gonna run this command, which is init-pky, which is going to initialize pki environment. So we can hit enter and then it should look like this for you. Next up, we're gonna set up the certificate authority and then generate the certificates. And to build the certificate authority, we're gonna run this dash dot slash easy RSA build CA, hit enter. Then it's gonna ask you to enter a new passphrase. So you can enter whichever password you want here. Make sure that you remember it. So hit enter and then you wanna confirm it and hit enter again. And then you just wanna name, uh, give your, host um, a name so the common name that we're going to use is kali-openvpn-ca so then we can hit enter and we've just successfully created that certificate authority so next we're going to generate the server certificate and the key so we're going to run easy rsa gen req server no pass hit enter it's going to request another common name for this we're just going to use server hit enter and you should see this and it will create uh, the files in this directory path. 
Next, we're going to sign the service certificate with the certificate authority using this command, sign-req server server, and then we hit enter, and then you want to type yes in here, and then you want to enter the passphrase, and then you can see that is done. Next up then, we're going to want to generate the diffie Hellman parameters, and you can do dot slash easy RSA gen dash dh, hit enter, and then just wait for this to go through and complete. Once it's completed, it should then look like this. Then we're going to create the HMAC signature for TLS authentication using OpenVPN dash dash gen key dash dash secret TA key, hit enter. So now that we've generated those certificates, which allows us to actually authenticate to the OpenVPN server, we're now going to want to actually config configure this OpenVPN server. So first we need to create the server configuration file. And to do that, we're going to create an OpenVPN directory and then change into it with this command. So we can hit enter. So it looks like we've already got that directory. So we can just CD into the directory itself. So next we want to create the server configuration file. So we're going to do sudo nano server.com, hit enter. And then this is the configuration that we want to put in. First of all, this is going to set the port to 1194, which is the default port used for OpenVPN. We're going to be setting the protocol here as UDP because it's generally faster for VPN connections. In these next few lines here, we're going to be specifying the path to our certificates, which are going to allow the clients to connect to our VPN server so they know what the server VPN key and authentication certificates are. In this line here, we're creating the IP address range for any client that connects to our VPN server so they'll have an IP address of one of these uh, within this network mask and the client will actually get one of these IP addresses when they connect to our server. This one is very important, this push redirect gateway, DEF1 bypass DHCP. This makes sure that anytime somebody connects to our VPN server, that all data will go through the VPN so that we don't end up leaking our IP address. This line here is just telling the clients to use the DNS of Google when they're connected. So make sure that your configuration file looks exactly like this to make sure that your server configuration file is going to work correctly. So do control X and then it'll ask you to save, type Y and then hit enter and it should come back to the terminal like this. So now we want to run these commands here which are going to copy all of the certificates that we created to the correct directory. And once you've run that command, it should then return you to the prompt terminal prompt to show that it was executed correctly. Now that we've done that, we want to configure the network settings for the VPN server. And the first thing that we want to do is en enable IP forwarding so that when you connect to the VPN server, you will get the IP address of the VPN server rather than leaking your own IP address. So we actually want to edit the sysctl configuration file. So you can run this command, sudo nano etc slash sysctl.conf, hit enter. We want to come down to the, this line here and we want to actually uncomment this so we can delete that and it should look like this. And this is going to now allow us to enable IP forwarding for IPv4, which again will just allow our clients to use the IP address of the VPN server instead of displaying their own IP. So again, you're in nano, so you're gonna do control X, yes, and then hit enter, and you'll be returned back to the prompt like this. Then we're gonna to want to apply those changes, so sudo sysctl-p, and as you can see there, this has been enabled correctly. So then we wanna configure the IP tables for NAT or network address translation. And to do that, you're gonna be wanting to run this command here. One thing you do wanna watch out for is this here, which is your network interface. You need to make sure that this is um, correct. So to find out your network interface, you wanna go into a new terminal, do ifconfig. And you can see here, Mine is of course ETH0, but please add in the network interface, your network interface after running this command. Then once you've run that command, you should return to the prompt like this and it'll show you that it's correct. Then we're gonna run these two commands, which are gonna make sure that our IP table rules are now updated with the rules that we've just added. So sudo apt install IP tables dash persistence and then sudo net filter persistence save, hit enter. And then we can hit yes. And then we want to save current IPv4 rules. And then yes for both. And then it should return you back to the prompt like this to confirm that it's been done. So now we're actually ready to start the OpenVPN server. So we can do sudo systemctl start OpenVPN at server. So then we can hit enter. And it should be returned to the prompt like this. 
Once we've got that, we want to then check the status to make sure that um, it's actually um, been started correctly. And to do that, we can run this command here, which is sudo system ctl status open VPN at server. Hit enter. And what you're looking out for here is this last line where it says initialization sequence completed. This means that the VPN server has been started correctly. So now that the OpenVPN server is up and running, we need to create the client certificates so that our clients can actually connect to our VPN server. So I'm still on the OpenVPN server now. I'm going to CD back into the directory that we created earlier uh, to be able to create the certificates. And as you remember, we're going to be using this easy RSA terminal again to create these client certificates. So first up then, we're going to be creating the client certificate and key. And uh, we're going to be using this command here. So dot slash easy RSA gen rec client one, no pass. You can hit enter. You can name the common name. So we're going to do client one. And then it would have created those keys successfully. Then we're going to be signing the client certificate with the certificate authority. So we're going to be running this command here. Uh, dot slash easy RSA sign dash rec client and client one. Then hit enter. And we can say yes here and enter a passphrase. Enter. There we go. Then that has been created successfully with those client certificates created. We're going to move them now into our open VPN directory so we can run these three commands here. Hit enter. Put my prompt for your password. Now those certificates have been moved to our open VPN directory. Now we need to create an open VPN client configuration file. To be able to do that then, we're going to go into the directory where we've just moved the certificates. Uh, we can go to etc slash openvpn. And as we can see here, here are our client configuration files. As you can see here, here are our client configuration certificates that we've created. So now that we have these, we can create the client configuration file. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into our text editor to create a new file. And what we want to do is add the following in here. So first of all, then this is the client open VPN configuration file, which is the client is going to use to connect to our OpenVPN server. So what you need to change here then, so it says remote. So this is the server IP uh, and this is the port. So to be able to get the server IP, the easiest thing to do is go into what's my IP address. And then we can accept that. And uh, we can hit here. This then here will reveal your IP address. So you want to copy this and you want to add this in here. And then remember, this is the default port for OpenVPN. So you want to make sure that is correct as well. So the rest of these settings you can leave as default. But then what we're going to want to be doing here then is actually add in the certificates uh, that we recently created. So you can come over to your terminal and you can see the first one that we're looking for is the content for CA-CRT. So we can come over to our terminal and we can do cat CA-CRT. Oh, we'll need to do sudo cat ca.crt .crt hit enter and what we're going to be doing is copying this and pasting that and pasting that in there like this so you should see it begin certificate end certificate and the certificate should be in the middle like this then the next one we're going to be going on to is client1.crt we're again back over to our terminal sudo cat client1.crt. As you can see, this file looks slightly longer, but we only want the certificate at the bottom. So again, we want to be copying this and then we want to paste it in here. Please do make sure that you haven't got any spaces at the bottom because that can cause some errors. So please remove those spaces. So the next one that we want is client1.key. So we can do this again, sudo cat client1.key, hit enter. Again, we're copying this private key then in here so that should look like this and then we've got the final one then which is insert the content of ta-key uh, so again sudo cat ta-key and we can see we want to be copying this into our client configuration file as well so then once you do that your client configuration file look like this make sure that you've got the remote ip address then you make sure that you've got all your certificates and it should always say begin certificate end certificate with the content of the certificate as well. So please make sure that your file also looks like this. Then you're just gonna to wanna to save this. 
I'm just going to save as client one dash OVPN. This then allows um, the client OV OpenVPN software to know that this is a client configuration file. So you want to switch this to all files, client one dash OVPN, then save. And now we've successfully created our client configuration file. So before we can connect via our client, you're going to need to then switch over to opening port 1194 through your router so that your client can connect in. And usually to be able to do that, you're going to need to log into your router. So often the IP address of where you want to log to is going to be an internal IP. It'll be listed on the back of the router with a password as well. So you'll have to confirm what yours is and then navigate to that area and then navigate to that IP address and log in. So the configuration for your router is going to depend on which router that you actually have. But for me, it's an internet and then IPvV4 port mapping. And then I need to update this. So you need to add in the IP address of your open VPN server. And to get that, like you can see here, we do IF config and we can see that the IP address for that server is 192.168.1.12. And then we can add a new address in so 1.12 so we can add that in here um you can just call it open vpn we're going to use udp uh the port um and then the public port 1194 local port 1194 click save and then you're going to want to click apply again this is going to depend on your router settings so please review the guides online to try and figure that out so now that our open vpn server is configured and up and running and we've opened a port in our router to allow inbound connections on port 1194 to allow connections from clients. Let's test that out with our other Kali Linux virtual machine, which is going to act as our client. So we can start up the other virtual machine. So as you can see here, we've got that VPN server running in a virtual machine and our VPN client. So this client configuration file, we need to move to our other Kali Linux virtual machine, which is acting as the client. So then once you've got the client configuration file onto our um, cl uh, client virtual machine, we're going to want to run this command to actually connect to the OpenVPN server using our client configuration file. So make sure that you specify the correct location for your client OVPN configuration file uh, so you can run this command. And as you can see here then, it's saying that this has successfully connected to our OpenVPN server and you can see initialization sequence completed as well. So then we can run this command, which is going to use our client configuration file to connect to our OpenVPN server. We hit enter. What you should see then is where it says initialization sequence completed. That means it has successfully connected and you can actually test this out then. So you open another terminal and you can do this command, which is curl ifconfig.me, which will return the IP address of the VPN server. So then you can come back to your open VPN server and switch to the var slash log directory. And what you'll see in here is that you'll be able to view the, the open VPN status log, which is going to show that that client is successfully connected. So you'll need to do sudo cat open VPN dash status dot log, hit enter. And as you can see here, 10.8.0.6 has successfully connected and that can be confirmed there that this is the client that connected. So congratulations then, you now understand what a VPN is, you understand how to set one up at home, and now this is another project that you can add to your resume and your CV, so when you're applying for jobs and going into interviews, you can explain exactly how to set up a VPN server and how to do it at home for free. These are the kind of things that employers are looking for out of potential cybersecurity professionals like yourself. And this is all great hands-on experience that allows you to apply for those jobs that are asking for one to three years worth of experience. Now, if you did like this video and it's piqued your interest of getting into cybersecurity, go and watch this video next, which tells you how to get into cybersecurity with zero experience. Thanks for watching. I'll see you over there.